Hello, my name is Dr. Shamos and today we are, yes, we are doing another theory crafting on King. I've been playing some games on King in the unlimited side of the sim. Uh, been playing against other OP08 uh, leaders and this leader is super fun. I still don't know if this is going to be meta or not. Um, I think on my first video I said this could potentially be meta and my point still stays, my opinion still say, stays. Especially uh, now that I understand the deck better and the combos better. Um, but I don't know, it depends on the on the other leaders. Like for example Pudding, I've been playing against a lot of Puddings and uh, I still think Pudding will be much much better than King. Not only that, I don't know if my strategy that I'm going with this deck is the best one in terms of uh, competitive, but it's the most fun I've, I've, I've been having to be honest. So yeah. So I'm just gonna try and explain why this deck list feels so good uh, and why I'm in really enjoying playing it uh, from time to time. So first of all, my strategy here is trying to ramp up to Tendon as fast as I can and then dropping the Kuzon and after that we start playing the game. Uh, so early game, the weakness is early game, if you take a lot of uh, hits, um, then when you once you drop the Kuzan, which is the card we're looking for, uh, you you are going to be struggling, so this deck has a lot of 2k counters and a lot of blockers to try and make us survive that. Not only that, this deck has the Queen, which is the MVP here, uh, which pretty much cycles your hand and Sabo, but Sabo I'm only playing 3. I thought 4 was the way to go, but to be honest, his draw 2, discard 2 is not that good, uh, especially early game. Late game, yes, early game, no. <laughs> so yeah, I think 3 is doing fine. But yeah, pretty much we use these cards to cycle out as well as the searcher. We use the, these cards to cycle out the, the hand and search for the pieces that we want. And hopefully we are in a comfortable life to drop the Kuzan. And after that, it's when I start playing the game. So this is a slow deck. And if I get my pieces together, it's an unbeatable deck. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, I will admit it's a bit hard to come by the, all the pieces with consistency while surviving uh, enemy hits and enemy strategies. So yeah, let's go now for the my reasoning over every single card. First card is the Skink. Now, people really enjoy to play this one instead of the 7 drop king, they prefer the 6 drop king. Uh, many people that are theory crafting on this deck uh, are just showing this card. I think people are somewhat uh, sleeping on this king. My strategy revolves a lot of ramping and then playing the game. Some people other uh, in theory crafting are explaining that their strategy is not so much as ramping, but pretty much trying to survive still uh, do, uh, till they finally get to Tendon. So they don't try to rush as much as the Dawn, but they try to survive and eventually get to the Dawn that they need to drop their pieces. So yeah. Uh, that could be uh, one of the reasons why they're playing this king. This king is better if you're not uh, rushing to ramp up the cards. But once you're at 10, this card just becomes your Luchi. Um, not only that is a Luchi, but it is a very big body to put out. So it's very hard for people to remove it. Um, so yeah, I'm really enjoying to play 4 of him. Uh, I 4 of Kuzan and 4 of King is uh, can be somewhat bricky, but I'm not gonna lie, if you're playing 3 of each, the hand can become less brick. the hands can become less bricky, but you will not come by the pieces that you want uh, that easily, so I'm playing just 4 of each. Next is Basil Hawkins, not many people are playing these cards, uh, people obviously like, like to play Bond Clay, the only reason why I'm playing this card is uh, because he is searchable. He has Animal Kingdom Pirates and you can play, uh, you can search him with this event. So he's searchable, not only that, if we get him in the lives, we can play a trigger. But um, I don't prioritize playing him, you know, unless I have better things to, don't have better things to play, I don't play him from hand, I play him from life or use him as a 1k. So he helps me survive till I get to late game and when I start playing the game. Most of the time it's like that, so yeah, but it's actually a pretty good addition. From time to time you make a swing with him onto other searchers that people attached on, so yeah, that, that's, that's, he does not have much more utility besides getting lucky and being a 1-2k uh, counter, like getting lucky from lives and playing him. It's just really a replacement, but it's really good because it prevents with my event to not whiff in my searches. 
So that's why I decided to play him. Uh, Keith is a very good uh, card here. I was playing three uh, of Keith and four Sabos. But again, because I realized that Sabo on early and mid game, dropping him, uh, draw two and discard two is not that good. Because you need to have a uh, hand size, healthy hand size to have 2k's in hand. So you survive early game and then late game you start playing the game. So yeah. So I decided to go 4 kits and uh, 3 Sabos. This kit is really nice because pretty much if you get uh, Onigashima, which is a card you're looking early game. You can play this guy as soon as you drop on 5. And then use your leader ability, which most of the time will be live. Where you can just take away 2 Dawn. And then uh, draw a card, so you're keeping your hand size somewhat small, you're still looking for your pieces uh, to, you know, to pretty much late game just destroy your opponent. And this kid will give you one Dawn back and then Onigashima will give you the, the next Dawn that you would use. So this pretty much, obviously, it will still delay your ramping up to 10, but it's really nice because at least you're not going down on Dawn. And only that if you're not seeing Kuzan uh, early or like early mid uh, game with draws, uh, you can do this much easier so you can start drawing and start uh, circling out the deck to see the Kuzan. Next is Kamasu. Kamasu is here because it's a 2k counter and he has a combo with Moria and one legged soldier. Pretty much you can play Moria. Moria will be playing uh, Kamasu and one legged soldier from your trash. And then what you can do is. You use your leader ability, no sorry, you use your one like soldier, so you activate main, give someone minus three, and then you just activate your leader ability, taking away two dawn, and you you can either draw a card or minusing uh, two costs on someone, most of the time it's uh, minusing the cost, and because you return dawn, Kamazu will uh, drop, will just kill a body. This by the way, if you are late game and you have Kuzan, and you drop King while Kamazu is on the play. You're dropping three cards from the body, the from the field. Sorry, F three bodies from the field. And this has happened a lot, especially with Pudding. And I really enjoy it. So yeah. Um, <clears throat> sorry. So that's his use, but he has really good use as well as 2k counter. That's really nice. That's why I'm actually running the Mori attack. But I'll get to that. Next is Black Maria. I think, in my opinion, Black Maria will have a better use on Pudding, probably. Because on Pudding, I believe Pudding will have a more... It's more viable for you to play the new uh, Kaido and Lin Lin card, uh, the 10 drop. So pretty much when you swing, you take away all your Dawn and then you, you destroy all cards on the field. As well as taking away all your Dawn. But Pudding has a really nice uh, leader effect that helps her ramp up a lot. And Black Maria then can help you uh, get the Dawn back. Because you play Mar Black Maria, she'll give you a lot of rested Dawn. And because you're only dropping that Kaido and Lin Lin on the field late game, that Dawn does not get returned because you only return normal or equal um, equal number of your... Uh, up. Sorry, I'm messing up. You return Dawn to the field once you pass turn uh, to... Um, to make your Dawn equal to your opponent, but because you are in late game, you probably will not be returning any Dawn, so you just keep the 5 rested Dawn. So it's a really good way to ramp back up. With this kid, uh, Black Mario does not have that much use, so I'm only using her as a 2k counter that is searchable with the event. Uh, still very good, and if I really want to just ramp up some Dawn, I can just do it. So, yeah, but most of the time I'm using her as a 2k. Next is Rush Kaido. Uh, again, Kaido and Lin Lin could be a replacement for this, but I don't think so. I don't think you're going to use it on King. I think the, this Rush Kaido is much better. It's, such, it's just a tech card. Most of the time I like to play a bit slower with the deck. So I'm playing with the Kuzans and King, like I said. And from time to time I can just drop this Kaido. And yeah, like, again, we're taking it slow, but the Rush and the KO really helps. But I think it's just a tech card. Next is Queen. He's the MVP of the deck. Pretty much, you uh, you want to drop him mid, literally mid game, uh, with Kid. So you, Kid helps you with Dawn, and Queen just helps keeps your hand size very healthy, as well as searching and cycling uh, for the pieces that you want to do on late game. So yeah, he's really nice. He's searchable thanks to the event. 
uh, is a blocker, uh, is a really good uh, body and a really good card, and I think he's a very, st he's very staple, unfortunately. I know the, the deck is very expensive with the cards that you guys are seeing here, but I, I'm, I must admit this is a staple for this king. Next is the Kuzan, I already told you, pretty much your stra my strategy at least revolves uh, around the Kuzan. You dropping the Kuzan and then starting to just KO anybody on the field um, and then slowly taking away um, the lives of your opponent. Uh, I'm, I haven't tried this strategy yet because Unlimited has been not that active now. <laughs> But I really want to try to starve the enemy as much as possible. I want to take that uh, that ability to it the extreme. I don't know how healthy the other leaders on Opioid can can keep their hand size. But if they struggle, maybe going with um, with uh, starve and not swinging with leader and just playing board and uh, trying to cycle out your hand. Maybe be the the play and then slowly you can just make swings with Kuzan, which will connect onto lives. So yeah, that's. I think that I haven't tried that for some reason. I I'm just having fun with the deck, so I was always swinging with leader, and from time to time, obviously the opponent would take the life. But maybe just going from the for the extreme starve, maybe works. Oh my god! Sorry, my lamp almost fell. So yeah, uh, your strategy really relies uh, on Kuzan. I think he's going to be a staple, unfortunately, as well. He's very expensive. But again, if you drop one of them, it's really good. If you're comfortable enough to drop the second, I think it's unnecessary. But there's some times that I'm so comfortable that I drop the second. And that's pretty much you just KOing everybody away. So yeah. Savo, I kind of already talked about. He's, he's good. You really like uh, playing him to cycle out. I still think you need him in, uh, in somewhat like maybe two copies at least. The, at the very least. But I think 3, it's pretty healthy. You don't want to see him as much on early and mid game. You kind of want to play him on late game to cycle out cards. Because if you reach late game and you start doing your strategy, uh, then you can start playing Sabo to recycle your hand and then uh, to, re to cycle your hand, sorry, and see more pieces that you can play. So you'll be looking at many of the, looking for the kids, uh, the kings and so on and so forth. So yeah. He's good, but I don't think he's necessary at 4. I could be wrong. Obviously, 4 we give some consistency to the deck, but it is what it is. One Lex Soldier, this is being played because of the Mori attack. Uh, you can play Tsuru. Tsuru is uh, more on on-play effects. So she costs, she's a 1 cost, so you can just drop her. But I realized that uh, I was only playing Tsuru on late game. So when I already have Kuzan, so I have Kuzan, I will drop Tsuru and give minus 2 and then I will just play like King and King would, uh, would KO. So if I'm on late game, on late game I already have a lot of Dawn, so I, 2 Dawn does not hurt you and it does give um, minus 3 which is better. So yeah, I decided to take out Tsuru for the one legged soldier. I was thinking about playing Tsuru instead of Black Maria, but uh, that would make the deck not consistent at all, and I really... I can't let my event with. So yeah. Next is Moria. Uh, some people really enjoy playing Moria at 3, some are theory crafting on playing Moria at 4. I think... Mo I'm sorry, I don't think Moria is that necessary for this whole strategy. Uh, I decided to uh, to add two copies because I believe it's good tech. I will admit it's really good tech when you're um, when you're making the combo with Kamazu and one Light Soldier. I'll give that, but I don't think you should be reliant too much on Moria. I think Kuzan should be the most card that you're reliant on. Uh, so yeah, I I just decided to to do that. And so at two, it's pretty nice. You're not looking for it. You're just, you can uh, comfortably just use Kamazo and One Legged Soldier as 2k counters. And once you see Gecko Moria, you can play and just do the combo. Uh, many times, many, many times, I have Kuzan already on the field. That just gives me comfort, comfort to play the Gecko Moria, do the combo, and then, like, I just start. Uh, I just have a lot of pressure if I get these two on the field, Moria and Kuzan. But yeah, I don't think people should. I think many people are actually agreeing with me on this. I'm seeing a lot of videos and people are usually playing 3 now on Moria, but many many comments are saying that they don't think that Moria is the way to go. You can definitely play without this combo, but I will admit this combo feels really good and it's really fun and it's nice uh, if you can pull it off. Again, if you can pull off the strategy that I'm going here, 
This deck is invisible. Nobody stays on the field and you... Every swing that you do onto the enemy, they either have to block or just take the life. So it's really nice. So I decided to try the deck and it does really well. I think two Modius is enough. Next is only one Jack. Um, I was playing more of him. Uh, he's searchable with the event. But to be honest, because you're playing King and you're playing Kamasu, uh, you could eventually just take him away and maybe play a uh, Gum Gum Jet Cat Link. Uh, or maybe the other Sabo, but from time to time he's a really uh, nice body that once you play him You can play him on mid game by the way uh, as soon as you uh, reach uh, 7 on So if you manage to ramp up you can play him and start using his ability to cycle out cards and um, And KOing blockers Because he KOs 3 or, or lower so you can KO a lot of blockers that are uh, from early game So yeah, it's really nice but I think having two will make this deck too breaky. So the one, it's fine. Besides, thanks to Queen, Sabo, and the event. Sorry if you guys hear the sirens. You, we are, we will be cycling out a lot of cards easily. So yeah, this card will come to my hand. Uh, I just feel bad every time I have to discard it uh, because you know there's times that I need to survive. So I'm using Jet, jet Catling and just discarding this card. But yeah. If you can manage to, once again, like, you have Kuzan, you have a lot of cards that just have insane chemistry with Kuzan, this is one of them, so if you can manage to play it, it's nice, but I'm really not reliant on it, I'm more reliant on King, Kuzan and Kamasu uh, play, like, you can hard play Kamasu, by the way, I usually like to just use it as 2k counter, and then once I have the opportunity with Moria, but you can hard play it, and then you have good chemistry with these two, and Kuzan pretty much just KOing three bodies at a time. But this is a good tech. Next is Gagam Jet Catlink. Uh, we are playing a, a lot of blockers and a lot of 2Ks. But just having these two just in case we need. I mean we are playing what? Uh, 4, 8, 8, um, that's 12, 12, that's 13, 13 and let's just put this. 13 plus 4, that's 17 cards that are 17, okay, for 21 cards that are probably brick. Thankfully with the cycle, this 21 brick cards are not as bad, but you can make adjustments around it. So yeah, Jet Catling just helps me a lot dealing with that brick and I'm only playing 2 because I think I think that's the space you have for it. Again, you can take Jack and just play a third, that's some uh, way to do it, that's nice. But I don't know, I, this is, has been working, so I'm just going to leave it at this. Next is 4. Uh, we are going to claim the One Piece. The reason why I'm playing 4 of the events and not 4 of the Queen, of the Black Queen Searcher that's coming out, is because the Queen cannot search itself, so this Queen and this event is um, can search everything. So uh, it's much better, so I decided, you know what, I'm just going to do this. Pretty much, I would compare this situation to the situation of Red Purple Law in OPO5. I was playing uh, three uh, uh, Searcher Laws at the time, let me just show you. This one, the Searcher Law, every time you attack, if you have left st uh, less on than your opponent, you search for a Heart Pirates. But then, um, but then uh, it was it came to my attention that this, when you're at CO5 Pirates, was much better because it let you uh, pick up the Kid Blocker, it let you pick up all your Heart Pirates and the Zoro Juro in case you were playing it. So yeah, it's the same situation, um, but if you want, you can still try, I would still advise to try and play four of these events and maybe two of this queen. You can take like, again, you can take away the Moria and just try to play more for the Animal Kingdom pirates, but yeah. And next is the uh, Donigashima. I'm seeing a lot of people play three of these. Yes, you, oh, I accidentally... Sorry, I accidentally took. I'm uh, seeing a lot of people playing uh, four of these, uh, three of these, sorry. I'm playing four because again, I'm not looking for the most competitive strategy, although this is feeling, actually doing really good. Uh, I just trying to get to late game. So having eight cards of pure ramp, then you have the jump gatling, if you can, you have the trigger as well. Uh, just helps, uh, so yeah. But Onigashima, uh, least of the least, I should take away Hawkins and play uh, something else, maybe this one, Sazaki, 
So maybe take away Hawkins and play Sasaki, uh, having even more defense, and then just leaving uh, the four on Igashima. Uh, as the, the, this is still the main way of you to ramp, so yeah. But people uh, don't like to play as many bricks as I do. <laughs> I, I'm just playing as many of these bricks because, again, Queen, Sabo, and this Jack really help you uh, just cycling out the card. So you don't really feel bricky. Um, so yeah, but Onigashima, I think it's a must on 4. You really need to see it early game to get your strategy going. If not, you need to have the event, then use the event. And if you see one, you, um, you just grab it and start ramping up. Then pretty much every time you use Jack ability, guess what? You're going to be discarding the, the, the other ones that you have. Queen, same thing. Sabo, same thing. So yeah. Uh, so it's really good cycling out. This deck has no problem cycling out the bricks. Uh, the only problem I see it's surviving till you have 10 Dawn. That's the biggest problem I see with the deck. But I still think it's very viable. Um, I'm just making this video to put out there my thoughts. I'm not, again, I'm gonna say. Uh, this, this deck list and my thoughts are done by researching other videos from other people. And seeing some gameplay that the East is already testing for as well as doing some testing myself, so I'm just doing what it's more fun for me and what feels better for me. But this will probably not be the most competitive uh, build that you have. It's just one that it's really fun. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate, as always, if you stay till the end of the video. Please do tell me in the comments what you guys think of this leader, what you think the strategy will be. If you guys agree with this uh, decklist or the strategy I went for, uh, with uh, the extra Hawkins for the searchable uh, ramp up. Uh, you guys can tell me whatever. You guys can tell me to just drop this and Bond Clay. I Oh, just to finish that, actually. I'm not playing Bond Clay and, uh, instead of Hawkins. Not only is Hawkins searchable, but Bond Clay it's good for the ramp up. But uh, you really don't need Bond Clay to copy anybody's power on the enemy field. Like, you have really big bodies. That will just make really big swings. So Bond Clay most of the time just stays there and it's just a ramp up, you know. And then people just take him away. So yeah, it, it, I was getting more value uh, with Hawkins actually. So yeah, thank you so much. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Once again, I'm going to ask you to leave in the comments the thoughts on this leader and this deck list. What have you guys been building? Maybe you guys have been trying out the king as well. I, I'm really intrigued by this leader. I still think it's too expensive for my for me for my taste not not my taste but for me i don't have that much money because of kuzan sabo moria uh, the rest is actually pretty affordable i already have some cards here queen is also very uh, extensive but i already have the queen so that's nice but yeah goodbye